First up, we need to unscrew the big front screw and the two smaller screws on the trigger guard. I will not show you how to undone the screws because this one is self-explanatory. After that, you can remove the trigger guard and the stock from the main action. After the stock came off, we can remove those two metal pins from the right side. We can punch them out to remove the trigger mechanism and the safety. We do this with the 3mm punch and the hammer or the bigger screwdriver. First one and the second pin. Now the pins are out, the safety and the trigger unit comes out. And make sure that you don't lose this nut here. To be able to pull out the main spring and the piston, you need to punch out those four square shaped blocks on both sides of the rifle with your hook shape, Allen key or nail. Number one and number two and the other two you can press out with your punch. After you have removed the four square shaped blocks, you can use a spare seal to rest the end piece on it and then you can twist the end piece off. You twist counterclockwise until this little piece here clears the notch and you can pull out the trigger housing or the end part of the rifle. And you can remove the rear spring guide, main spring, and for the piston you have to unscrew the barrel, which I will do now. You unscrew the nut on the right side first. And then you can unscrew the bolt from the left side. <coughs> and after that you can remove the barrel and the cocking arm. push the barrel to the front until you can lift up the cocking arm out of the steel cylinder. And that's it. Here you can see the polymer inlay in the cocking arm to prevent gulling on the steel cylinder here. And now you can pull out the piston. For cleaning off and out all the excess loop from the piston and from inside the steel cylinder, we will now use our wooden rod with the kitchen paper attached and normal kitchen paper. Just push the rod inside and twist. And this way you can get rid of all the excess loop inside the cylinder. On the piston and seal, wipe off all the old loop. And also on the main spring. We can now apply a little bit MOS2 grease on the whole spring and also on the rear guide. After the whole spring is now covered, you can push in the guide rod and you can begin to slightly loop the outside of the 
piston seal and the piston itself. Make sure that you don't get any loop in front of the piston. Just a very light coating. You can also apply a little bit on the piston rod on this ledge. And that's it. You can now push in the piston and get the mainspring and the guide rod back in again. And then you can attach the barrel to the steel cylinder again. Push the cocking arm back in. Like this. And you can install those two washers. Put the bigger washer and the bolt back into place and do the same on the other side. Now you can screw in the bolt and attach the nut on the right side. First up, get the other washer back in and then screw on the nut and make sure you don't tighten the nut and the bolt too tight so that the barrel can still move freely. And that's good enough. After that you can install the end piece into the cylinder again and make sure that you have this square block inside the end piece. Just slide it over and turn clockwise to get this little ledge here into the recess. And that's done. Before you install the trigger unit, cock it first. That makes assembly easier. And don't forget the safety. Put the safety back in place first and then insert the trigger unit into the slot. Safety is now held in place. Align the trigger unit with those two holes and you can press in the metal pins from the left side. And don't forget to decock the trigger. And again, make sure that this nut sits correctly in the trigger unit. Otherwise, the stock won't get screwed on correctly. And then you can install the four blocks. Push them back in. And that's done. You can now insert the metal working into the stock. Press the trigger guard back in place and screw in all screws. And now the HW50 is re-looped and assembled.